as I just showed you, the Gigabyte motherboard, both the DFE 990FX AUD5 and the UD3 have only a single 32-bit PCI port means that yeah you need to pick a different motherboard if you wanna have 12 of these RJ4045 ports for GNS3 you can still do some minimal topologies but if you wanna go to like CCNP or even later you might try CCIE it will be not enough now let us come back to the 580 versus the 570 so personally I found that the 570 is actually a better option and this is because uh, it is using all the Intel chipset and not the Tulip like the 580 is using the Tulip chipset and this means that this older card actually have a better compatibility from the perspective of the Linux drivers so it really fully supports the add tool so you can blink all the LEDs as you wish and you can really do fancy things uh, with this card I found with the DFE 580 uh, actually I really bumped into IRQ issues so personally I think that the 570 is a better option even though I must say that this card generates quite a lot more heat than the 580s still if you can get for GNS3 the 570s go with the 570 instead of the 580 as a remark when it comes to the CPU and to the system RAM and the machine in general in my view whenever you are doing virtualization you should not even realistically think about overclocking just don't do it don't even mess with it because you will, you will just put the system under unnecessary stress and you will have instability issues you might have you know have enough luck if you are just running a single windows and you are just gaming for a virtual machine the load is different and everything is different it's more sensitive for instability so yeah I would not overclock anything if I, I would be you what you gain with overclocking you will lose with stability issues when it comes to the case I got the Fractal Design Define XLR2 which is a full-sized extended ATX case it's right down there uh, I cannot show it to you better because my Canon camera needs insane amount of light to make any half decent video uh, anyway so during the build I will explain to you why I picked this case even though you can buy smaller cases I think that I would not buy a smaller one for the following two reasons first of all if you wanna build in a full-sized extended ATX motherboard which for a virtualization host is just normal then you will not have the space first of all second thing is that as I already mentioned I wanna have a relatively quiet machine and for that I need physical space to be able to put in 14 centimeter coolers which are built into this case by the way and also if you wanna put in multiple hard drives well, guess what? You're gonna need the physical space. The disadvantage behind using one of these fractal design or any, in fact, of the standard PC cases is that you will not be able to rack mount the hardware. For some people that might, you know, be a really negative point. Personally, I don't care about it. I mean, even though I could have bought a 4U 
Rackman case, I can tell you that you simply cannot install a fan which is larger than 8 centimeters in any of those uh, cases, which means that, uh, yeah, they generate lots, lots of noise. This is why I picked uh, one of these large uh, standard cases instead. And uh, I have so far, uh, I am quite happy with it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would buy it anytime. Yeah, when it comes to the case itself, it's rather big. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it because the Scanon camera is just ridiculous. You need a nuclear explosion and even then it is a low light condition. I mean, I have two large LED lamps putting more than 40, 6 watts of LED light on it, 6000 lumen, and yeah, you just cannot see squat on the picture. Anyway, so uh, there are two USB 3 ports in the front, which is something what I like about the case. And there are also two old school USB 2 ports. Then on top you have the power button, a reset button. Hopefully I don't need to use that very often. Uh, something which I did not like about the case is that it lacks a hard disk activity LED. This is why I actually modded this thing. So I put inside a red LED which then I will put in the motherboard to the hard disk activity. So when I power it on, then it's solid blue. And when there is hard disk activity, then it turns like purple or so. Uh, by the way, sorry for the shaky camera, but I have to do it free-handed because I cannot simply get it in different angles with my tripod. Well, anyway, uh, on the top there are two of these uh, removable, yeah, I mean cloths, which you can, uh, yeah, remove and put in a 14 centimeter fan, which I don't think I will do. So I was just showing these two places on the top. As I mentioned, I don't think I will use them. Instead, I will put one of the 14 centimeter fans here on the side panel because this is where uh, all the PCI Express cards will be put in to the motherboard and these quad uh, Ethernet uh, cards or in particular if you use like a RAID controller card or a Hosbus adapter they run really really fa uh, hot. So this is why I want to give the system a little bit of air from the side because uh, normally this hardware is supposed to be in a rack mount case in an environment which is air conditioned where the noise is a non-issue. However, in my case I want to keep the noise level as small as possible and still do not cook the hardware. So. Yeah, that's why I will install here one of the 14 centimeter fans. Most of the things in this case you can do toolless, meaning that you can just screw things in and out with your hands. I, to be honest with you, I'm still old school and I'm just gonna take a screwdriver to these things because uh, I prefer that way when something is screwed in real hard, you know. I mean, yeah, you can kind of remove them with your hand, but I found that often you cannot tighten the screws as much as you want to. On the very bottom side of the case, there is uh, one of these grills, which is holding back uh, really large particles to go into your chassis. Namely, Per default, there is a cooling fan installed right here at the bottom, which is then blowing air in. I don't really like that configuration, so I will move that fan to here on the side, as I already showed you, because I think it will do a better business there. And, by the way, if I got any 
Japanese viewers, you know, this is another reason why I would buy this uh, computer case. Because, I mean, come on, just look at the tiny feet. You just got to love it. For now, I will be using a Be Quiet 500 watt power supply. I must say that I don't like this power supply. I already repaired it once. And even though the cooling fan is a high quality cooling fan made in Germany, the electronics is... Uh, let me just not describe it. So the electronics is using the cheapest components what you can get from uh, Wong Hong Lo companies from Shenzhen. The capacitors are absolutely no name. So I will replace this uh, power supply once I have time to buy another one. Next to my job is uh, I don't have much time. Anyway, so I will most probably replace it with uh, a 600 watt power supply and I will buy a completely passively cooled uh, power supply. So these panels what you see here are the, on the top of the case which you can, as I said, you can remove and put in additional 14 centimeter fans. And in general, the whole case is padded by a, a soft material, which is then dampening the noise. You can see it here as an example as well. And also on the side panel, which I removed. And this way, the whole noise level coming from this case is really really low. Now when it comes to the system disk and for the disk which is then holding the data for the uh, virtualized hosts then I think nowadays you just have to go SSD. Especially when you have multiple virtual machines running on one of the, your hosts the, they will really, you know, they will hold the disk down, a traditional mechanical disk to a grinding halt. They are pretty much a no-go option nowadays. So personally, I will be using one of these relatively cheap Crucial MX100 SSDs for holding the content of the virtual machines. And I will be having a SanDisk SSD as the system disk on which I will have then uh, the my Linux. And then based on this Linux KVM, then I will be running my virtual machines and GNS3 and whatnot. We will see what I will uh, install on this machine. Another option, of course, would be what people often do is to just install ESXi for an example or one can even do it with a minimalistic Linux kernel as a kernel based virtual machine to put it on a USB stick and then plug it into one of the ports on the motherboard. Now the thing is that the Gigabyte motherboards do not have this functionality so if you are going with the USB option, then you have to buy a USB uh, port to one of these uh, adapter cables to be able to plug it in somehow if you want to hang it in. Or of course you can just plug it into the backside which is not very elegant, however it works just fine. I personally do not use the USB option for my home computers, so that's why I'm going with the SSD instead of the USB as the system disk. Uh, this is in particular because I want to use the underlining, you know, uh, uh, kernel and the whole machine as a real Linux host and then who knows what I will do with the virtual machines. However, for video rendering I would prefer to have then a full-blown SSD where I can do my things and I don't have to worry about what happens with the 
image of the virtual machines. This then sums up the component selection. I think I explained as much as or as good as I could why I picked these parts for building a virtualization host. If you think that I made some major mistakes or you would have made a better build for the same price using, yeah, I mean, sticking to the selection criteria what I had in mind, please just let me know, put your comments in the description below because I'm interested of what type of things people are building together. And yeah, for the future, I might just select another hardware. Who knows? We will see. Many thanks for watching. If I can put together this machine just fine, this means that I have now a video editing machine, so I can proceed making some new videos for my YouTube channel, in particular on Cisco and other kind of networking stuff.